Hi, I'm Josh with Woodland Mills, and this video is about our WC46 PTO driven wood chipper. In front of me is the crate that the chipper comes in. I want to cover its product weight, shipping dimensions, um, a few common accessories, and how you get it shipped uh, to your location. So the crate is 35 inches deep, 35 inches high, and 44 inches wide. The shipping weight is 625 pounds, and the product weight within that is 550 pounds. It's shipped in an iron crate on an iron pallet with a cardboard sleeve just like this. Because of its weight and the dimensions, it needs to be shipped by transport. And with the shipping, we include tailgate delivery. So they're gonna get it to the driveway, lower it to the ground, um, wherever that's available. We've got two common accessories. So we have a replacement blade set, which includes the four blades and the hardware that you're gonna to need to get those retorqued to spec. Or we have a full spare parts kit, which includes the four blades as well as the anvil bed plate and the replacement belt for the hydraulic infeed system. Now I wanna take you over to an assembled chipper and show you what it looks like on the iron crate and talk about the different features. So as we can see, the chipper is quite a bit larger now that it's been assembled. I wanna go through what's required for the assembly. So there's four bolts that hold this discharge chute on and that's gonna to add to the height. And then there's this rear infeed chute that gets assembled with a series of bolts, goes on the hinge, and that's what makes it longer than the crate. Next, I'll show how we get our last few inches and that's done here with these bolts. So when the chipper comes on the crate, these bolts are gonna line up with the lower two holes and then you'll be able to back your tractor into the three point hitch lift the chipper off the crate, loosen these bolts, drop down the legs, and replace them in the upper position. And that's how we get the chipper in its final height and get it up out of the shipping crate after it's been assembled. Now I wanna talk about the three-point hitch. So we've got a category one three-point hitch. It's quick attach compatible. This was specifically designed for subcompact and compact tractors uh, by weight, by the torque requirements, by the way we've designed the flywheel and the infeed system. It's really designed to cater to those lower horsepower tractors that have the Category 1 and the 6 blind PTO that runs at the 540 RPMs. So the PTO shaft comes in the crate with the chipper. It's shear bolt protected and it's trimmable in length. So there's a process to trim your PTO shaft to match your tractor once you've got it hooked up. Some measurements are done. The PTO shaft gets trimmed so that it has the right range of motion while you're lifting and lowering that three-point uh, linkage. And that's all covered in the manual. Uh, we're quick attach compatible. So this has been set up so that you can reach right in and grab it with your quick attach. Or you can use just the regular category one. You'll see the six blind PTO connection here. We've got our pulley, which drives the belt down to the hydraulic pump. So our infeed system is completely independent of the tractor. So you do not need remote hydraulics to run our infeed. You just need the PTO connection. So with the PTO spinning at 540 RPMs, we're gonna drive our pump. That's gonna make the pressure that's gonna drive the infeed system. I'll talk about in a minute. You'll see we have a spring-loaded tensioner here, and that's just for ease of maintenance and use. Once the belt's on and the spring's been set, you don't have to worry about the tension in the belt. I wanna go around now, and we'll talk about what's in the housing. So we use a clamshell design, which is basically a hinged lid. And with this hinged lid, I've pre-loosened the locking bolt here on the clamshell. So with this clamshell design, it's hinged at the back and you'll see as I open it, it gives us full access to show you the flywheel. It also gives you access for maintenance, for changing blades. I'll start by going and showing you the two inch main shaft we spoke about. We've got our dual uh, four bolt flange bearings with the grease fittings for maintenance. The flywheel paddles 
are slightly angled. And what that does is it draws the chips and brings them and condenses them in the back edge of the paddle. You'll also notice the paddles are longer than the flywheel. So we run the flywheel at an 18 inch diameter and then we run the paddles at 24 inch diameter. And that gives us the tip speed we want or the velocity of the chip. So once the chip has been made, it gets condensed into this back area corner here, the paddle, and then it lines up with the chute and it gets discharged. So the 24 inch diameter in the paddles gives us lots of uh, speed to throw the chips. And then the 18 inch flywheel at three quarter inch thick, that allows us to maximize the available torque in the subcompact tractors. Uh, so in the lower horsepower range, the closer you're cutting to the center point, the easier it's going to be to make that cut. The further out you get, the harder. So we're trying to maximize the available horsepower and torque. We're running four blades, three bolts on each. These are reversible hardened steel blades. You'll see the back edge, or the second edge of the blade is protected within a pocket design here. So we've got a pocket with a relief. The blade fits in so the back edge, or the sharp edge doesn't get damaged while you're wearing on the front edge. As we spin it, you'll see that there's four blades. And then we run the four blades because we're running this at 540 RPM. So this is a direct drive through that two inch shaft straight from the PTO. And that means we're making four cuts every revolution. And we're doing that to keep up with the infeed speed. Before I close the clamshell, I wanna show you the one last feature, which is a locking pin. So this pin, it's got a storage position. It's got a locking position. And this pin lines up with holes in the flywheel to allow you to lock it in position while you're changing and retorquing the blades. So whenever you're in here and you're working, you want to make sure this flywheel doesn't spin. And this locking pin is going to allow you to do that. These indexing holes are located in all four positions. So you have access to the blade all the way around and you can lock each one, switch it over, and you don't have to worry about the flywheel moving around on you. I'll get this back in the storage position and we'll close the clamshell. And I want to talk about the where you're going to find your manual and your hardware. So for the assembly process, you're going to find the hardware package here in the manual tube. It comes in a bag. It's going to be placed within a uh, full length manual that covers the schematics, the assembly process, the PTO trimming, uh, maintenance of the machine. It's all going to be in here as well as the hardware pack that you need to get the infeed chute assembled and the discharge bolted. Further to assembling it, you're gonna add, have to add hydraulic fluid to the reservoir. It takes 17 and a half liters or four and a half gallons of, of fluid. And that can be bought locally. Uh, this is the hydraulic drive motor, which drives our infeed roller. Next to it, we've got a speed control. And this is gonna control the pressure going to the motor and the speed that it turns at. So the pump makes the pressure, sends it through the master control, which allows us to forward, neutral, reverse the infeed system. And then the line comes out, runs through the speed control, which sends the pressure to the motor, and that motor is turning our infeed uh, wheel to drive the material into the chipper. You'll see we've got springs in here that lets us preload the tension and that's the roller is being forced down on the material and driving it across the lower plate. As we come around further, I wanna show you the infeed chute, its dimensions. We've got 19 inches wide by 18 and a half inches high. You'll see it's hinged at the top, and that allows us to fold it up for storage. So when not in use, when you've got this set away, you can flip it up. You can also flip it up when you're transporting the chipper, so it's not quite as long. 
you'll notice that once you get this on the arms of your tractor, uh, with this down, it's, it adds quite a bit of length to the tractor and it's got a bit of a tail. So if you're going through trails or you're in the forest, it's nice to fold this up. It minimizes the chance you're gonna impact it as you're making your turns. With this up, I can show you the latch system we use and I'll show you how they inter engage at the bottom. I can also show you the locking pin. So right now this is a, the forward neutral reverse bar for the infeed and we've got it in the lock position. So in the lock position, I can use it as a handle, right? And that'll let me lower it down. And then once we're down, we have the two latches that'll let me secure it. And then this pin comes out and I go right down to the control and I reinstall the pin. And this is going to let me do the forward neutral reverse from the back bar now with the hydraulic infeed system. And you'll see that once we start using the chipper a little later. And I'll show you how that all works. You'll see on the top here, we've got a resting pad for when the infeed shoots rotated so it doesn't mar or damage the finish. I want to show you the infeed uh, reservoir tank, which is on this side. So this is our reservoir tank for the hydraulic fluid. Again, 17 liters, four and a half gallons. This is the anvil or the bed plate. You'll see there's three bolts here that get torqued to hold it in place. This is a handle for setting its depth off the cutting edge of the blade. So the blades on the flywheel are coming around. This is a fixed blade and they, they cut like a pair of scissors, right like that. So we're setting the second blade's edge with the anvil. And again, it, it moves in and out to set it to the specified clearance off the blade edges on the flywheel. While I'm here, I'll show you the flange bearing that rides the infeed roller. The infeed roller is covered in chisel knives and we'll get a good shot of that next. I'm gonna open up the chute again so we can get a good shot of that infeed roller. So behind these clear plastic sheets, and what these sheets do is they stop any debris from rolling back at you. You'll see the infeed roller, you'll see the chisel knives on it, and that's what digs into the material as it passes under and gets fed into the chipper. And again, the speed of rotation of this can be controlled by the speed controller, and the direction of the roller gets controlled by the red bar at the back for the forward, neutral, and reverse. Now I want to go and talk about the discharge chute. And this is where the chips are coming out of. They're being thrown out of here by the flywheel and the paddles in the flywheel. We've got a chip deflector at the top. It's got a control handle here, which allows us to place the chips close to the chipper or as far away as possible. And you'll see how effective that is uh, in the use video. You'll see here we have 360 degrees rotation with a locking pin. So this can come down. It's got a seated position so it stays open. This can be rotated 360 degrees anywhere you want the chips to go. Put it back, it'll click in at the first available index. You've got multiple positions all the way around. For storage, you just got to watch that your infeed chute doesn't interfere with it. So it likes to be out here. So now that we've gone over the features, we've talked about how this was specifically designed for subcompact tractors. I want to get a subcompact tractor. We're going to back it up and we're going to put some branches through this and show you how it chips.
So I'm out here in the woods. We've put everything down. I'm going to grab the chainsaw. Today we've got the John Deere 1025. Uh, this is about a 17 horsepower, the PTO tractor. So it's a hydrostat. Again, the John Deere 1025, and it's rated around 17 at the back. So you'll be able to see what this chipper will do with 17 horsepower at the PTO. We'll get this set up and then I'm gonna go gather some material. I'll try and get a mix, some hardwood and some softwood, uh, varying diameters. So you can see how it does the small branches, the larger branches. And then I can show you some of the features, uh, like the speed control, the forward neutral reverse of the infeed, as well as just how fast it does pull the material in and how much load it applies on this tractor with the 17 horsepower. Let's get some material. Okay, so I put together quite a pile here. We've got some hardwood uh, with ash. We've got some dead cedar. We have some live cedar. Uh, I got a little bit of fur. Um, it should give us a good uh, range and good selection. We've got two inch material, three inch material. I've got one piece right up to four inch there in the ash. And uh, some of these cedars look like they're around three inch as well. So I'm gonna go now, we'll get the tractor spooled up. The PTO is designed, or the chipper is designed to run at 540 RPM, so we're going to get the tractor set up so that its PTO is set there. And then I'll show you how the chipper functions.
So this video has been about our WC46 PTO driven wood chipper. You've seen the various material that we've been able to put through it. You'll see how the infeed system, hydraulically driven, really pulls that material in and allows you to really focus on getting the material to the chipper as opposed to watching it go through it. Uh, the forward neutral and reverse features handy, lets you control the speed uh, of the infeed, as well as the speed controller if you're consistently doing larger material. We were running it on that 17, uh, 17 and a half PTO horsepower. So if you've got more than that, you're going to be able to chip larger material. You've got less than that, you're going to have to balance it with the speed controller. But that's why all those adjustments are there. Uh, you'll see our tractor is more than capable of picking it up. And that was part of its design was to make sure that we can pick this up on the subcompact tractors and get it to where you want to use it. I hope you found this video informative. This has been Josh with Woodland Mills on the WC46 PTO Driven Wood Chipper.